Guys, in this video I want to cover how to configure some parts in the toolbox and how to add extra custom properties to them. So if you're in SolidWorks you can get to it from the toolbox drop down menu or from the task pane, just right clicking on one of these folders here, or you can get to it from the start menu if you like, if SolidWorks isn't open, so under the SolidWorks tools and toolbox settings. Uh, what I'd recommend you do is you go through, create a password uh, so that you need to log in. Uh, so that no one, so that not just anybody can come in and change stuff. You can also specify how the parts uh, should be created as either configurations or as individual parts. And then go through and uncheck any standards that you won't be using. Uh, that'll prevent anyone uh, dropping in files or parts from these standards uh, because, you know, obviously they're going to be too expensive to order. I've also gone through and uh, turned off some of the different types of hex bolts that I don't want people to be using from my toolbox. And all this doesn't take very long, it's just a matter of just going through and unchecking. If you jump across to the Customize Your Hardware tab, I'm just going to drill down. We're going to take a look at some extra options here. And let me just clear these out for the moment, and we'll redo them. So you can see here, you can go through on the size, uncheck any sizes you don't want people to be able to order, so I've unchecked all the, the non-standard sizes uh, that my company wouldn't order. Likewise for length, you can do the same, so any non-standard lengths, you can uncheck those as well. Thread display, I only want to use a simplified option, I don't want cosmetic threads or schematic threads which use circular cuts to represent the threads, so I've turned those off. Uh, this is a shared property, which means that it applies to all of the uh, bolts and screws in this standard here, and you can take a look at some of the thread data and screw clearances which are the uh, actual sizes used to define the bolts and the bolt heads. Okay, once we set all that up we can take a look at some custom properties. So we've got the sizes, we've got the lengths. Um, by default you get a part number, description, comment. The description is grayed out. Uh, to activate that field you need to have something in the part number field as well. So uh, we're going to look at quick ways of filling all of this in. So you can see here we've got quite a few bolts to do. So we need to fill these in quickly. Before I do that though, I want to add some extra custom properties. So for the first first one it's going to be length. I'm just going to turn that on. That should give me a length column there. And it's called it length one because we've already got a, a length column. But we can't call this one in a in a bill of materials. Uh, but using this one here we can, so we'll be able to specify this in a bill of materials. I'm also going to create another one. Let's call it part. And part's going to be, in my particular company, we use part as the custom property uh, used for the description of the part rather than, say, the description field. So let's take a look at how we can fill these in quickly. Uh, so what we can do is we can export them, export all these fields to a, an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to write over that one there. So it's going to create an Excel spreadsheet with all of these fields in here, we can use Excel to fill this in really quickly. Okay, once that's done, a quick way to jump into it is if you just say export again, and just right click on that file, we can just say open and it should open in Excel. That's fine. And if you just jump back to the toolbox, we'll just cancel that. So that's a quick little shortcut to open up that file rather than browsing back to it. So you can see we've got our fields from the toolbox configuration tool uh, here. So what we can do is we can just copy uh, the bits that we want. So for example for length, I'm just going to copy them from this cell, this range of cells here. Control C and Control V. And there we go, that's our length done. For part number uh, we can start out, let's say, we're going to call these 1, double zero, 1. If I drag down, you can see it's going to increment it by 1, so this is using the power of Excel to help us fill in some of these fields, so my part numbering system might be something like this. You can see these are all filled in nicely. For description, I'm just going to copy the description uh, in the configuration names, like so. Uh, we don't need any comments, but for the part numbering, let's say for my part, I want to just get rid of the this this beginning string here and the end string here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the um, 
find and replace tools in Excel to help me clear that up. Before I do that, I'm just going to select the entire column, format this cell, and make this column uh, format the cells as special. And you'll see why in a second. So when I come to replace, what we're doing is we type in the bits we want to replace. So we want to get rid of this B18.2.3.5 M and also the dash and the space. So you can see I've included all of that there and leave it blank, leave the replace with blank and that will delete all of that string there. Under the options now we can set the format to only apply to any cells formatted as special and that way we're going to avoid deleting the string from the configuration names in this column. We're just going to work on this column here. If you're not 100% sure that you've actually typed it incorrectly, just click Find All first, just to verify. That's looking fine. They're all from the J column. We can just say Replace All. And that's done it. So it's deleted that part there. We can do the same here now for the second part. Get rid of those dashes. And then if I type in a star and then N, so the star will pick up any string of text in between those two values and uh, should delete everything there so again just just verify that that's looking pretty good replace all so that's all of our parts and descriptions done we can save this I need to just I've got a slight bug with Excel here I just need to save it as an as a new Excel format file first and then I can save it back as a normal Excel file. You notice I've called it modified so I'm not overriding the original values. Now if I go back to my toolbox and say import data and import that modified Excel spreadsheet you can see it's going to go through and fill in all those values for me. Length, part, all filled in nicely and that will apply all of those extra custom properties to the parts when they're created so that I can call them in a bomb. You just need to make sure that you save this after you're done. Okay, so now that we've got the toolbox configured, what we're going to do is we're going to just place it into a an assembly in a drawing so you can see the custom properties in action uh, and seeing, see where they're getting pulled through from. So, I'm just going to browse into my ansi-metric hex head bolts just grab a hex bolt like so and I'll be prompted to pick the size and the length and you can see that this is the length field that we put in that part field there is just highlighted in yellow if you hit restore values that'll switch it back to our particular description that we want and then we can click OK OK and that's fine we don't need to place any more of those. And I've also got a drawing of this here with the bill of materials. So you can see we've got the part number that we specified and the description field. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the custom properties in this particular part. So I'm just going to open up the part. Here we go. Let's take a look at the file properties, the custom properties in here. So you can see that we've got the part custom property that we specified as we'd expect, and the length, and these are configuration specific because right, obviously we've got a whole bunch of extra configurations in this part. And the particular part number, we just browse down to here, there's the active configuration if you go to properties, you can see that the part number actually gets written to this particular part number field in the bill of materials options in the configuration, so that's a special thing done by the toolbox. So if I go back to my bill of material now, I'm going to insert a column to the left, use a custom property, uh, say length. That's cool, so now we've got our length field in there. And we can even use our part. So this is if we wanted to get rid of that description column and use the part column as our description field instead. So now you can see that that's displaying the information that we want. And that's how you go about configuring parts in the toolbox. Thanks for watching.